If you're a diehard fan, if this, if this kid is already in your program, then you probably already know who they are. But folks, these kids, I will tell you right now, are all in for first team all conference kind of season. Some of these guys are going to be in the national awards conversation when that time comes. So our breakout players for 2022, we got six of them. We're going to give them to you one by one. And these are all names that you're, if you, if you don't know them right now, you will know them by, I would say, end of September at the latest. First on our list, Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver at Ohio State. He popped in the Rose Bowl a year ago, had three touchdowns when Garrett Wilson wasn't playing, Chris Olave wasn't playing. Quite frankly, folks, he's up next in that Ohio State wide receiver room. He's going to benefit from Jackson Smith in Jigba, a lot of people's best wide receiver in the country this coming year in 2022. He's going to benefit from all the double teams that he's drawing. And so for Marvin Harrison Jr., a big body in this wide open Ohio State offense and a more mature C.J. Stroud, expect him to put up big numbers. I mean, he is going to be extremely productive and going to be a weapon all fall long. So Marvin Harrison Jr., also if that name sounds familiar, Marvin Harrison caught a few touchdowns from Peyton Manning back in the day. More than a few. Second guy on our list, and this is a school that doesn't get probably spotlighted enough for all the success they had in 2021, but Blake Shapin is going to be QB1 at Baylor. Not because Gary Bohannon, the Big 12 champion quarterback, is going to the NFL or graduate or anything like that. They just said during the spring, hey, Blake Shapin, we think you're the best quarterback on our roster. You give us the best chance to win, and we're going to roll with you. If that doesn't tell you enough about Blake Shapin, I don't know what does. He stepped in in the Big 12 title game with Gary Bohannon hurt and just threw dimes. So much talent. His best football is still ahead of him. And like I said, this team won the Big 12 and a Sugar Bowl last year behind their starting quarterback who they still would have been able to bring back. And again, credit to Dave Aranda for making the tough decision and making it in the spring and saying, flat out, Blake Shapin, you're our guy. We're going to roll with you. That situation alone should tell you about Blake Shapin and what they think about him in Waco. But he's a guy that's going to pop. I think he'll be right up there in that top three category in terms of quarterbacks in the Big 12. And it's going to be a deep conference. You got JT Daniels, Dylan Gabriel, Quinn Ewers. I think Blake Shapin is going to be right up there in the upper tier in the Big 12. This is a guy that a lot of you probably already know. But Ole Miss running back, Zach Evans, transferred from TCU. I have him as a breakout player because he really really hasn't been able to put a full year together just yet. And he's a dude that is good for nearly a first down every time he touches the ball. He's right around six or seven yards of carry for his career. He's a guy that gets downhill with bad intentions. And now being in the SEC, he's going to get more of a national spotlight. And make no mistake about it. They are going to feed him the rock like spoon feed, baby Gerber kind of style. He is going to get the ball early and often. You say, why? Well, because they don't really have their quarterback situation figured out yet, it sounds like. Luke Altmaier, Jackson Dart, sounds like they're going back and forth. Any way you slice this, whoever's playing quarterback is going to have the luxury of taking the snap, turning around, handing the ball to Zach Evans. And when Zach Evans gets going, the whole offense will open up. So I'm excited to see him, again, on a more national, a a program that gets more national attention. It's no knock on TCU, but we just understand the kind of viewing that the SEC gets. So Zach Evans, a guy that you will know about. If you don't know about just yet, you will know about him going forward. Tons of talent, was a five-star out of high school. I mean, you can't say enough good things about him physically. If he can stay on the field and stay healthy, he will be an All-American caliber kind of running back. Mark my words. Staying in the freak show category and talking about a program we talked about earlier in this show, Jaheim Bell, tight end South Carolina. Now, he's listed as a tight end, but he'll line up just about anywhere for this program. He'll line up at running back. He may take snaps at quarterback in the Wildcat. He may line up out wide at wide receiver. He is a Swiss Army knife for this offense, and he is just scratching the surface of what he's capable of doing. 6'3", 230 pounds, runs like a deer, He popped in the bowl season last year. He had two touchdowns over 60 yards. I think he finished with like six catches, 159 yards or something like that. 
Guy is a big play waiting to happen. He is a big human being who runs really fast. And another guy who's going to be a weapon for this offense as they continue to work in Spencer Rattler. So Jaheim Bell is going to see a heavy dose of the football, and he's going to get a chance to touch the ball in a lot of different ways. Bottom line, just know who Jaheim Bell is. He's drawn comparisons to Debo Samuel, and we all know what he's doing in the NFL right now and what he did at South Carolina. Jaheim Bell, a guy to know, a guy to watch, who will be a breakout player very, very soon. Number five, I got Joey Porter Jr. So sticking with our theme of NFL legacies, Joey Porter Jr. plays corner at Penn State. Now, he was third team all Big Ten last year. I think he's going to pop on a national scale this year. Joey Porter is exactly the kind of corner that this game is starting to trend more and more towards. Like, I think he's going to pop this year. I think he's going to be a high draft pick. He's about 6'2", but he moves like a deer, and he's got really long arms. So in coverage, he's just a matchup problem for you if you're the opposition. I mean, it's, it's tough to attack a guy like that when you can throw the ball on the back shoulder, and he still has a chance with those long arms of him to, to tap it away. I mean, Joey Porter Jr. is a guy who jumps off the tape when you watch him on the defensive side alone, and that's saying something. Usually when you're watching a game, you see, wow, that receiver's really fast, or wow, that running back runs really hard, gets downhill. Joey Porter Jr. at the cornerback position, probably at the top or bottom of your screen, is a guy that you will know about by, again, late September. He's going to be up for postseason accolades. I very, very strongly believe that. He will be... I'll, I'll say, I think he'll be first team Big Ten. So, Joy Porter Jr., a guy to know. His dad played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was a linebacker. Uh, I would recommend YouTubing him if you haven't because he's a lot of fun to watch as well. So, good genetics there. We'll finish this list with a guy who transferred from Alabama. Drew Sanders transferred from Alabama to Arkansas, was an outside linebacker, was playing at Bama, came out of high school. He was a five star. And one thing leads to another with injuries and just Bama being Bama and how hard it is to play there says, okay, enough is enough. I'm going to go somewhere where I can play inside and where I can start today. Cause he started at Bama for a little bit. That's speaking to his talent alone. He started at Bama, but he wants to be somewhere he can play inside and have, I would imagine some stability in that position. Drew Sanders is a freak show. To be able to play on the edge and transition to middle linebacker in the SEC and start for Bama as a freshman, kid's got ability in spades. They're going to ask a lot of him next to Bumper Pool down there in Arkansas. I believe in that program, believe in Sam Pittman. I believe in Drew Sanders and his ability alone in his second season, he's going to be a guy that you know about in the SEC. Uh, he'll have his work cut out for them. Don't get me wrong. I mean, given all the freak shows running around in the SEC, he'll have a chance to prove just how good he really is against some of that top talent. So those are our breakout players for 2022. You want to know these names right now. If you don't know them now, you'll hear about them in the very near future. They'll come up on the ticker. They'll be in the postseason accolades conversation. You got Marvin Harrison Jr. from Ohio State, the wide receiver. Blake Shapin, the new quarterback at Baylor. Zach Evans, just a bad man running downhill. The running back from Ole Miss. Jaheim Bell, Mr. Do-It-All of South Carolina, the tight end. Joey Porter Jr., corner at Penn State, and then Drew Sanders, the linebacker from Arkansas. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.